Welcome to the third and final episode in a legendary series about the history of Halloween treats. In this episode about chocolate, we will learn about the 3,500-year history of this beloved sweet. Few things are better loved than the smooth and rich taste of a piece of chocolate. Hundreds of millions of people consider themselves chocolate lovers, which makes chocolate a multi-billion dollar industry. However, there is a hidden history of chocolate beyond what you see on supermarket shelves. Chocolate is made from the cacao tree, native to Central and South America and other equatorial regions around the world. Its fruits are called pods, and each pod contains around 40 cacao beans. The beans are dried and roasted to create chocolate. Each cacao tree only produces enough beans to make 10 regular-sized Hershey bars a year. The Olmecs first began to cook cacao beans around the year 1500 BC, roasting the beans in pots to make a ceremonial drink. The Olmecs undoubtedly passed their knowledge on to the Mayans, who not only consumed chocolate, but revered it. Mayans used chocolate drinks readily available to most in celebrations and to finalize important transactions. Mayans drank thick and frothy chocolate, often combined with chili peppers, honey, or water. Under the Aztecs, chocolate became associated with the aristocracy, which drank hot and cold spiced beverages in ornate containers. However, they also used cacao beans as currency. Some Aztecs went as far as making counterfeit beans from clay for nefarious purposes. The word chocolate roots back to the Aztec word hoxolotl, which means bitter water. Due to the lack of sugar in Central America during this time, chocolate tended to be prepared as a bitter-tasting drink and combined with sweeter substances. Perhaps the most notorious chocolate lover of this time proved to be the Aztec ruler Montezuma II, who drank gallons of chocolate each day for energy and as an aphrodisiac. During the 16th century, the Spaniards conquered the Aztec Empire and took chocolate back to their king. By the late 1500s, it became a much-loved indulgence within the Spanish court. As other Europeans from Italy and France visited parts of Central America, they brought chocolate back to their respective countries. For example, Irish botanist Sir Hans Sloan invented milk chocolate while exploring Jamaica. The indigenous people gave him straight cocoa to drink, but he could only stomach the bitter drink when he mixed it with milk. Chocolate mania spread throughout Europe. European states made their own varieties of hot chocolate with cane sugar, cinnamon, and other spices. With the high demand for chocolate among European aristocrats came chocolate plantation in the Americas, worked by thousands of African slaves. Fashionable chocolate houses for the wealthy cropped up throughout London, Amsterdam, and other European cities. Few, if any, customers gave any thought to the blood and tears of African slaves who made their fashionable houses possible. The chocolate culture spread from Europe to its colonies in North America. In the 1730s, a young Benjamin Franklin sold stationery, Bibles, and chocolate from his Philadelphia print shop. Years later, General Washington paid part of his soldiers' rations in chocolate since it would not spoil during long marches. For the most part, though, chocolate remained a luxury for the rich. That changed in 1828 when Dutch chemist Conrad Johan van Houten treated cacao beans with alkaline salts to create a powdered chocolate easy to mix with water. Van Houten supposedly also invented the cocoa press, which separated cocoa butter from roasted beans to create inexpensive cocoa powder, which was used to create a wide variety of products. The world's first chocolate bar dates back to 1847, created by Joseph Fry and his son. They made it with cocoa butter, 
cocoa powder, and sugar. Of course, chocolate manufacturing in the United States transformed with the life of chocolate entrepreneur Milton Hershey. In 1894, he founded the Hershey Chocolate Company to make chocolate coverings for his famous caramels. America's most iconic chocolate brand today produces millions of bite-sized chocolates, each made by machine at Hershey's factory in the fittingly named town of Hershey, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Ruth Graves Wakefield later invented the chocolate chip cookie by accident during the 1930s while preparing food for her guests at the Toll House Inn in Whitman, Massachusetts. She tried to make a batch of butter cookies, but the chocolate chips in the batter stayed intact for some reason, and the iconic cookie came into being. Today, Europeans are the world's truest chocolate lovers. The largest chocolate-consuming countries in the world today are Switzerland, Germany, and Ireland. Some of that is surely sold at Brussels Airport in Belgium, which sells 800 tons of Belgian chocolate each year. However, it is Thornton's PLC in the United Kingdom that set the Guinness World Record for the largest chocolate bar in the world, on September 7th, 2011, the community made a chocolate bar that weighed 12,770 pounds. Of course, chocolate is one of the most successful industries in the world, each year making over $75 billion in sales around the world. Americans buy more than 58 million pounds of chocolate during Valentine's Day alone, making up a large percentage of chocolate sold in the United States during the year. Yet modern chocolate production comes at a terrible cost, much as it did during the 18th century. With the abolition of slavery, chocolate production moved from South America to equatorial Africa. As many cocoa farmers in West Africa struggle to make ends meet, some turn to low-wage or slave labor, sometimes acquired by human trafficking, to stay competitive. This has prompted grassroots effort for large chocolate companies to reconsider how they get their supply. It has also resulted in appeals for more fair trade chocolate created in an ethical and sustainable way. Hopefully, this activism will point the way to a better chapter in the 3,500-year history of chocolate. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.